This lamb, like a precious gem, has many beautiful facets. Join us for the facets of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about one of the many facets of Islam. It happens to be one that I'm very interested in myself and helped me to better understand the fullness, the richness, and the balance that we find in Islam. It's called rights. Everywhere we go, we hear people talking about rights. Human rights, women's rights, children's rights, and now grandparents' rights, animals' rights, plants' rights, so many rights. Everybody wants their rights. The right to vote, the right to drive, the right to speak, the right to worship, the Bill of Rights. There are so many topics coming up about rights, rights, rights. I want my rights. But have you ever considered the other side? Because in Islam, we find something that makes it very clear what rights are really all about. Consider, if somebody said, I want my rights. Well, what's your rights? Well, my, my, my right to, to have this and to have that and to have so and so, but at the expense of someone else. I want the right to talk. But how? Because if I'm too loud or talk too much, what about the person who would like the right of silence? Where's the balance? Islam shows us real clear because Islam doesn't just talk about rights. As a matter of fact, Islam makes it very clear about rights and the opposite side called limits. Because in Islam, for every right, there is a limit except for one. Let us talk about the first and the primary, above all, rights of this facet in Islam. The right of Almighty Allah, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Owner of the Universe. What is His right on me, His right on you, His right on the creation? It is His right to be worshipped alone, without any partners, without any made-up deities or gods, without any false worship. That's his right. It's his right. And for that, there's no limit. As much as you would like to worship him, as much as you would like to say thank you to him, this is totally unlimited. Go ahead, enjoy yourself, and worship him. It's his right. What's the next right? The next right is the right of the prophet who comes to you with the message for the people who came after Adam, Abraham, and Moses, and David, and Solomon, and Jesus, peace be upon all of them, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Every one of the prophets has the right, the right to be followed, the right to be obeyed, the right to be considered as a messenger as a prophet to their people. Allah sent these messengers and many prophets to many nations and finally sent the last prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent him to all the nations. So it's his right. It's his right to be obeyed because he is telling us how to worship Allah, how to give Allah his rights. To think about this a minute, you would realize, okay, this comes with understanding. If I lived before Muhammad, obviously I would have to give the rights, the right of prophethood to whichever prophet came to me. If I lived at the time of Moses, obviously it would have had to him that I would have given this allegiance and this following to Moses, peace be upon him. Or perhaps if I had lived at the time of Abraham, 
Ibrahim, as he's called in Arabic, I would have to give him this right to follow him, to honor him as my prophet, as the representative, as the messenger of Almighty God. So this is the next right with those limits. And after that, the scripture, the scripture itself, the scripture as it came to Moses, as it came to Jesus, as it came to Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, this scripture is from Almighty God. Therefore, this scripture has the right, the right of me to read, understand, and apply the correct teachings of scripture in my life. A lot of people, many folks in the world today, don't realize how much credence the Muslim gives to scripture. Not just Quran, as a matter of fact, it's a part and parcel of the Muslim belief that all scripture, all scripture that came from Allah is to be considered correct and holy. Whatever exists in its original form, the Muslim has no option but to say we believe in it and all of it and it's from our Lord. But then what about the rights in humans? Someone asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about this. They said, after Allah and his messenger, who has the most rights on me? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, your mother. Now this comes at a time in the Arabian desert when women had no rights whatsoever. Women were treated less than animals, less than dogs. Women were considered less even than human. And this at a time when the church was even having counsel as to whether or not a woman had a soul. So how could he make such a statement? Look at this statement. Your mother. Your mother has the most rights. An amazing statement for a man of his time and his place. The man said, and then who? He said, your mother. Huh? And then who? Your mother. And then your father. The rights in Islam, a most important facet is the rights of the parents. That if they become old in your time, that you give them the support, the care, the honor, the love, and the dignity. After all, the mother carried you in the womb for those nine long months and gave birth to you in trial and tribulation, pain and agony, gave birth till you came into the world and then cared for you and your needs and your wants and raised you up and taught you how to speak, taught you how to walk, taught you how to think, put your feet literally on the ground and set you on your way. Do you not owe her something? Do you not see the value of your parents in your life? And it's their right. It is their right that even if they get old and infirm, they're unable to care for themselves if they begin to lose their mental capacity so much so that they don't even know who they are anymore. It's still their right that you take the responsibility to help them, care for them as they cared for you in the first place when you were but a babe. To the extent that the Quran tells us that if they're in this condition and you care for one or both of them in that age, and that you don't even say, oof, no complaint from your lips while you give them this service. And it's their right, but it has limits. What's the limit? Ah, your parents are to be obeyed, except, except if they have you to violate the rights above that. When the parents ask you to worship something other than Almighty Allah, then no, you can't because you can't break the rights of Allah. If they have you to disobey the Prophet, then you cannot do this because it's his right over their right. So there are levels, and this is Islam teaching us the limits by understanding these levels, the priority of the rights, the rights of your body and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that the body has 360 joints and each of them has the right of charity be given every day. 
360 acts of charity a day is incumbent on you and I to fulfill the rights, the rights of the body. And he said, and this makes me feel better to know that even a smile in the face of your brother is an act of charity. Ibtisam, smile. To care for the body that he's given us, to give the body proper nourishment, proper rest, and proper care so that it can rest and rebuild and be strong. Exercise is an important part of having this body. If you don't take care of it, what will happen to it? And we know the results. Not to put anything into this body which will damage it and not to do things to the body to damage it. People will ask me, does Islam say anything about poking holes in the body, making, you know, these ring holes and and tattooing and putting marks on the body. How about if I'd like to cut some pieces off? How about if I'd like to add some pieces on? How about if I'll get a tuck here, a nip there, do this, do that? What about that? How about if I pull out some hair over here or over there or stick some hair in over here or over there? What about that? Your body has rights. Now, if there's a need, and watch the limits. If there's a need, a legitimate need for something, then it becomes permissible to do so. But for some frivolous, silly sport or game to put the body at risk, it's not permitted in Islam because the body itself has rights. And on the day of judgment, the body itself will testify against the person. The eyes will say, do you know what he made me look at? The ears will say, do you know what she made me listen to? The hands, do you know what he made me do? The feet, do you know where he took us? And the skin, even the skin will testify against the one who abuses the rights of the body. Rights. What about the rights? of your relatives, those close relatives. We've mentioned the parents, but what about the rights of your siblings, your brothers and your sisters, your cousins and your uncles and aunts, the grandmothers and grandfathers, the rights of your close family? Do they have rights on you? The rights of your neighbors. And we're not just talking about passing by and giving them the salam and the smile. <laughs> yes, nice that you did that. But what about their real rights, the deep rights that when Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, he's not a believer. He's not a believer until he prefers for his brother over his own needs. The needs of my brother must come first over my own needs. Otherwise, he's not a believer. And when he, peace be upon him, told us, He's not a believer who fills his stomach and goes to bed at night while his neighbor's stomach remains empty. And someone asked him, O oh, prophet of Allah, who are my neighbors? Who exactly? And he said, 40 in any direction. Rights. Rights. The rights of the neighbor. What about the rights of someone that's not from my faith? They're not of us. They're not Muslim. So, but look at this. In Islam, this right is clear. It's for everybody. Islam has taught us that every human being has come from the same source. That Allah, God Almighty, He's the one that created everybody, all from one man. And from him, his mate. And from these two brought forth many men and women. And he made us different in our appearance, our looks, our colors, our shapes. 
so that we would recognize each other. But they still have rights. A neighbor is a neighbor. A friend is a friend. Even in your business dealings, everybody has rights. And you must fulfill the people's rights. And if you thought, well, it's okay, I can cheat in business, everybody does it. Doesn't work. If you said, well, the person didn't even know, I just took a little bit out and sold it to them anyway. <laughs> I just shortchanged them and they didn't know it. <laughs> but you violated their rights. How serious is it? It was said by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to give the analogy, the understanding that on the day of judgment, a goat which had no horns would get his rights on the goat that had horns, meaning the goat with horns had poked him. Now the goat, the goat who had no horns will get his rights on that day. When we make a mistake, when we've done some sin, we want to be forgiven. And we go to a law. And that's the good thing to do. That's the right thing. And we say, oh, Allah, forgive me. And he forgives. That's what he does. That's his name, the forgiver. Maybe you've performed hajj, the pilgrimage. Allah forgives everything. Maybe you entered into Islam by choice, and then Allah forgives everything. Except for one thing. Allah does not forgive what you did to the people. That's between you and the people. So much so that he taught us that on the day of judgment, a person will be ready to go into paradise, but they won't be able to enter. They'll be stopped. Why? Because someone is waiting to take their rights. You've damaged somebody, and they want their rights. And you won't enter until they have been satisfied. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he asked a question. He asked a question to his companions and he said, do you know who the biggest losers, the, the poorest of all the people are? And they were saying, well, it's like uh, the poverty-stricken people. Is it the mesakin? Is it the, the, you know, the low people? He said, no. He said the person that's the most poor is the one who comes on the day of judgment with a mountain of good deeds. But the people are in a long line to take their rights from this man. And as they come forward to get their rights from him, they're taking from his mountain of good deeds one by one by one until there's nothing left of the mountain of the deeds, nothing. And the people are still in the queue. They're standing in the line waiting to get their rights. So much so that now he has nothing to give. So they begin to take their sins, their sayyat, their itham, and they're putting it onto him. And as a result of all these sins of others being put onto him, that he will enter into the fire of hell. And this is the biggest and the worst of all the losers. What about the rights of the animals? Do animals have rights? And look what Islam has taught us 1,400 years ago about the woman who had committed some very bad sins, something really bad, something worthy of stoning, according to previous scripture. And yet this woman went into the well. She went down, climbed down to get water. And when she came out, she was drinking the water, refreshing herself, quenching her thirst. And then she saw a dog, a dog who was about to die, his tongue hanging out trying to get some moisture dripping to the ground in front of her. And she said, oh, look at this poor dog. And she went back down, down into the well. And she climbed down. And you know, this is something, if you think about it, to climb down in those wells, it was scary. Even for a man, how about for a woman? But she went back down in there, and she took her sock or shoe and caught enough water and brought it back up and gave it to this dog out of the compassion give this dog its rights, its right to drink. And for this act, Allah forgave her of everything. And how about another woman? Now this woman is a so-called righteous woman. Oh, she prays and she fasts 
She gives charity. She likes to, oh, look at me. I'm doing this. But then she has a cat, a cat that she keeps confined and tied up and doesn't allow this poor cat to go about its business to collect anything to eat, even bugs, insects, nothing. As a result, the cat dies. And because of this, Allah did not accept her worship, did not accept all of these things that she was doing. And as a result, she went into the hellfire because she didn't give the rights to the cat. Plants, do they have rights? Trees, do they have rights? Insects and bugs, do they have rights? According to Islam, this beautiful facet of Islam, yes, every single thing has rights. The Muslim cannot arbitrarily just go out with a knife or a sword and start beating on trees and flowers and cutting them down for laughs. No, they can't. Nor can they kill the little insects and bugs just for something to do, pulling the wings off of butterflies, stomping on the poor low ant, and all of these things are forbidden in Islam because you must give the rights to these creatures. All the creatures have their rights. The limits? Again, consider the limits. Yes, but sometimes you can't. You do the best you can, and then there are times when these animals or creatures would cause a big problem. A rabid dog, a cat that's got something wrong with it, that it could hurt the children. Ants that are taking over the house, obviously, Islam then permits what? The normal common sense that says the rights of the humans are higher than the rights of the animals or these other creatures. So the balance is always there. Rights, but limits. And above all, to give Allah his rights. Because on the day of judgment, he's going to ask all of us about these rights. These rights. This facet of Islam, the rights of Allah, the rights of his books, the rights of the prophets, the rights of the parents, the rights of the body, the rights of the siblings and the relatives, the rights of the near neighbors and friends, the rights of the community at large, and the rights of all creation, and each has its own balance, limits, and rights. And this is one of the many beautiful aspects, the facets of Islam.